because frankly, I mean, who would say everything is perfect? You know, you could say you, I am doing my best, and so forth. But what is best? Is it just going along day after day with sort of this so-called normal state that is a, such a pandemic that we all think it's okay? Well, let's be honest. There is things which are not desirable in our life. I mean, we are sometimes in the grip of extreme resentment, jealousy, and so forth. Those are not pleasant states. So now, that there's two main questions. First of all, is it really human nature so that there's nothing we can do about it? And then, is it even, some people might even ask, is it desirable to change? So first of all, is it desirable? Now, some people say, that's what makes a colorful life. We don't want, I don't want to get rid of my, you know, very dis terrible ups and downs and upheaval and passions and all that because that's a colorful life. It'll be so boring without it. You know, and no, it's not just a, a small mindset that like, you know, great thinkers like Goethe said three days of uninterrupted happiness will be unbearable. <laughs> it's always the same. So boring. And then he echoes a French writer who said, suffering, that's really fascinating. It's changing all the time. Never the same. Always this ups and downs. A lot of things happen. Well, at the same time, isn't it because we try to justify by some kind of reasoning or philosophical you know, the ideology of spleen and of suffering, we try to say, okay, I don't know how to get out of that, so I better say that's, that's the way of life and that's fine, and that's my philosophy. It's a little bit like given, giving up the race before crossing the starting line. So now, it's, it's not quite desirable, if we're really honest. Because, you see, let's, let's take a few examples. You know, if you are sitting peacefully you know, in, in front of a beautiful landscape in the mountains or by a lake, with the harmony of nature, or walking in the snow under the stars, and with someone you love, or in, in a very peaceful state where your inner conflicts are gone for a while. So are you going to say, oh, I really miss the feeling of the emergency room in the hospital or something like that. <laughs> My life is getting really dull. I should do something about it. <laughs> or if I come now and say, what about spending your whole afternoon feeling extremely jealous. You know, it's like asking you, would you like to have a handful of itching powder on your back? <laughs> Nobody would go for that. So we know that there are something we'd rather be without in our life, and we won't miss it. Anyway, we, have, we had enough of those already, so it's not that we don't know about those emotions. And conversely, if I were to ask you, Propose you, would you like to spend the next two hours with your mind filled with loving kindness and compassion and serenity? You might say, well, that's not such a bad way to spend the next, the next two hours. So intuitively, you see that there are some mental states, some are more conducive to genuine happiness, and some not. So now, then, can you... So I think it's desirable for sure to get rid of some of the mental toxins. Now, is it possible? Now, this is, of course, a deeper question because you might say, well, this is human nature. This is how we are born. This is part of those, all these emotions came out through natural process of evolution. And that's how we are. This is the human condition. Yes, it is in the sense that we all experience those positive emotions, negative emotions, suffering, joys, Yes, we all have that. So in that sense, it is absolutely part of human nature and it's present in every sentient being's mind. It is there, but how? And at which level? Is it there like the white in this plastic? That means it's all over the the, the, the very substance of the practice. If you want to remove the whiteness, you have to destroy it. Or is it there, like maybe this letter on it, which I can 
maybe not this one, but if it's written with an erasable pen, I can remove it. It's there, but it's a result of causes and conditions of me having taken a pen and, and, and done something with an intention and, and so forth. So in that case, things can be changed. If it's not absolutely building, wired in, in the very core of our mind. So that's the question. Now, how can we answer that question? Well, from the Buddhist perspective, we can reflect from a, a contemplative or introspective approach. Yes, we do have. Or let's take another example still to better uh, approach that problem. Light, for instance. Light allows me to see all of you. And, and I can see something that is blue, that is red. I can see something that I uh, imagine is a nice uh, sound. <laughs> and, uh, or I can hear the, a, a, a shrieking a, a, a door that is making a terrible noise. So, or I can see some, a, a beautiful rose that I think is beautiful or something that looks quite disgusting. Also, light allows me to see all that and put some attributes. But the light doesn't become beautiful, doesn't become dirty. It's just the light. It's not modified by actually what it does. If light was carrying something of one of those ugliness quality or beautiful quality, then everything I will look with the light will become beautiful or everything will become ugly, which is, of course, not the case. So the very, what makes light special, it is precisely that it allows to, all this to arise, but itself, it's not qualified by it. So this is what the basic nature of mind has to be, if you really think about it, has to be to allow all kind of mental constructs, to allow love, loving kindness or benevolence and also allows hatred. None of those is so wired in, because then if hatred was so wired in, it will be there all the time. You could always see it, even in the moment of complete unconditional loving kindness, hatred would, you could see, look at it and say, oh yes, here is hatred too. It's not the case. When you want to do unconditionally good to someone, at this moment you are not thinking of harming that person, obviously. So, there has to be a basic cognitive faculty in the mind that allows all kinds of thoughts and mental constructs and positive and negative emotions to arise, but that pure consciousness is not, has to remain as it is. Or the wa like the water of a stream, H2O, it can carry medicinal substances of plants, it can carry toxic uh, pollutions, H2O is not modified by that. It's just the, 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 the carrier of that, or what allows that to, to go somewhere, to proceed somewhere. So, this kind of reasoning, and it's not only a reasoning, actually from an introspective point of view, if you really look deeper behind the screen of thoughts, whether it's deeper or if, whether whether it feels that you're going deeper within or it feels that you are dissolving those thoughts in, in a vast space of cognition, uh, kind of luminous space of cognition. And then, in any case, what it means is that there is something that is pure awareness or pure mindfulness, uh, bare cognitive faculty, that is not sort of, th those thoughts don't belong to it, but they come out of it. 